Hey guys, recently I spent some time making a sketchy looking character in 3D. There were a lot of interesting things I learned along the way and I'm excited to share it all with you throughout this video. Before we get into the process of actually making the character though, I want to brief you on how we'll approach the three main parts of the character. The face, the hair, and the accessories or clothing. So first, let's talk about the face. One thing that can be challenging about this style is the fact that we do our shading mostly through cross-hatching, rather than just easily drawing or painting like this. Having to constantly cross-hatch like this makes it hard to plan out where our dark areas and landmarks on our face are going to be. So my solution, which you'll see throughout this video, will generally be me lightly blobbing out whatever area we want to darken first, and then going over it using cross-hatching, and at that point, you can refine it to be more or less detailed. Also, some important things to note is we'll draw in a shadow under the jaw and in the back of the ear as well, that's pretty important in this style. Additionally for the eyes, we'll use a separate object later to draw in the shadows on the eyes so we can still move the eyes without the shadow moving. Now let me brief you on how we'll do the hair. For hair, we'll start off with a black base color and basically draw in strong white blobs in areas we want reflections to be. Usually these reflective areas will be the areas that pop out in the hair or are curving. You can also use a tool like binarization to easily see what these reflective shapes look like. And these types of shapes that I see are what I'll be drawing in first on the hair. One more time with this image, just binarize it. And now you can see all of these, what I like to call reflective shapes that appear. So your first job with the hair is to block out these reflective shapes. And honestly, this is a pretty easy part and is quite fun. After they're blocked out, you can refine it by drawing in thinner lines at a lower opacity and just really distorting it so it looks more detailed and streaky. You can also make it slightly brighter along its edges so it's not just bright and then dark, but rather it fades off. Lastly, let's talk about clothing and stuff like that. Generally, I'll start with a base color like black, and you want to draw in bright scribbles in certain areas where there's sort of a plain change. And additionally, in areas that are curving a lot, it's good to outline them and add some scribbles around them. Like here, around her things, you can sort of outline them in a way and have scribbles coming off of it, which just makes it look a lot cooler. Additionally, adding random sketchy looking scratches and designs is also a very good idea to get it feeling more handmade. Lastly, wherever you can, it's a cool idea to seam off the edges of your clothing to give it more visual appeal, like I'm doing here. I'll also show you this layer weight effect I added later, which can be a useful thing in this style as well. Alright guys, we're now ready to start the character. Before we get started though, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my masterclass. Are you interested in learning to make high quality stylized art in Blender, but are maybe struggling on how having a clear path to learning it? If so, check out my stylized art masterclass on ukyogirls.io. This is my comprehensive stylized art in 3D class and community, where you'll not only learn how to make things like stylized environments, scenes, characters, but also my actual process for how I pick my values, colors, designs, and use observational and design strategies while making 3D art, as this is what actually drives the quality of your work, not just like the button pressing that we're doing in this video in Blender. I'll show you how to sculpt, model, and rig this character so it's ready for animation, completely from scratch, as well as how to give it dynamic lighting and all of that great stuff. Even if you're a beginner who only knows the very basics of Blender, this will completely transform you from a beginner to someone who has a serious understanding and skill, not just in Blender, but in concepting and design in general. But that's just one of the many things that you'll receive upon joining. You'll also receive access to my full series going over how I made this stylized environment from scratch, including how I made this stylized dog model, and all of the other things you see in the scene. You'll also get access to my Ukyo character model and portrait series where I show you step by step how to make this character, as well as two full courses going in depth on how I made these koi pond and sunflower scenes. And by the way, you get lifetime access to all of this stuff as well as updates. Not only that, but you'll gain access to my observational series as well, where I talk about my methods called the layered method and custom concepting, which is what I actually think about while making my scenes, because the process of choosing colors and values is infinitely more important than, you know, the button pressing we do in Blender. Okay, back to the video. I'm going to be starting from a base that I already previously modeled in order to save time, so I recommend you do the same. Alright guys, so the first thing we need to do is make a base color and an outline for our character. So let's open up the shader editor on our character. I'll create a new material, get rid of the principal BSDF, and just add in an RGB node. And we'll use a bright gray color for now. Now we'll add a solidify outline to this. You can just add a solidify modifier and then make a new material slot. Click the up arrow key at the top and let's create a new material and this is going to be for our outline. And whatever color you set it to will be your outline color. And now back to the solidify modifier, we can set the offset to 1, turn on fill, disable flip, and set material offset to negative 100. You'll also have to go down to the materials tab and make sure you enable the camera option. Alright, one issue with our outline is it's going over the eyes and that kind of looks weird. Let's just select the vertices around the eyes and throw it into a new vertex group we can call outline. And now we can just set that vertex group in the solidify outline modifier to be this new group we just created and now the eyes won't be outlined anymore. 
All right, back to the body material. Now let's add a new image texture. I'll use a pretty high resolution here because we're trying to get a lot of detail with the strokes that we make. I'll then add a mix node going out of the RGB. I have other videos on my channel talking about nodes and stuff, so you can check those. All right, so with that done, let's start our eyes now. With my eye object selected, I'll create a new material and once again, we'll just use a white color for now. We'll make an image texture for it as well, but first we should just unwrap it like this. I'll mark a seam in the front and then continue it out to the back and now we've unwrapped our eye. We just need to make an image texture for our eye. So just like we did with the body, I'm going to add an image texture and a mix node. This time I set alpha to zero because I wanted to be able to draw with white and black and whatever color I wanted instead of like just black. And now I just want to basically fill in the cornea with a totally black color. Keep in mind, since we set alpha to zero, whatever we use as the primary color will be the actual color that it draws now. Do keep in mind that since this is a 2D looking style, we want to flatten the front of the eye sphere because if we flatten it, it will start to look a lot more anime-like and just make it look way better in my experience. Okay, back to the body once again kind of switching between different things here. I'm gonna draw in black on the lips area, although I accidentally drew it too low here. So what I had to do was select the faces around the mouth in edit mode to see where the lips actually met, and then drew in the line for this mouth once again and got rid of the old one. Now for the eye, I just select some vertices and hit Shift D, P by selection to separate it into its own object, removed all the modifiers, converted it to a curve, and gave it some thickness as well. And doing this allows us to easily adjust its shape and size with the points. I then just kind of set the lashes to a black color for now. I kind of use the stylized asset suite instinctively now, but we'll do it in the shader editor later. And then after that, I went back to the image texture on our body so that we could start drawing in dark strokes in areas around the face, like above and below the eye. Now the point with the sketchy manga style is to crosshatch the areas that you want to be dark. Usually what I'll do is just draw in a blob of darkness in an area and then go over it by just scratching with my mouse pretty much to make these crosshatched lines. So you'll see me here doing that for all parts of the face pretty much. Alright, back to the eyes. I'm just gonna draw in white around the cornea overall, and just draw these scratchy black marks around the eye. I'll also use the fingertip brush to adjust the shades around if I need to. Let's also draw like a bunch of streaks just on the bottom of the eye to make it even more sketchy looking. At the top, you can also draw in some scratches to indicate the shadow cast onto the eye, but later I'll undo this so that we can create what's called an eye shadow globe, so that when we rotate the eye, the shadow doesn't rotate with it. I gave her some stylistic looking marks on her face as well to further sell the sketchy looking feel of the character that we're trying to create. And after that, the only thing left to do was to keep making some small changes to the face. Alright, so now let's talk about how we can procedurally adjust the strokes we've drawn to make them harsher. We're just going to take these strokes that we already drew and basically increase their strength by a lot. This is very easy. In your shader editor, just add a mix node. Uh, you can duplicate the one that we had before and switch it to add, and literally just add the image texture to itself. So now, basically doing this doubles the strength of each stroke because we're adding it to itself, and we can slide the influence of how much we want this effect to take place. Let's also now add a white highlight for the eye, meaning the eye specular. I just added a circle object and filled it, and then gave it a white base color and that was that. And at this point, our eyes are really starting to get fleshed out. We can add some more curves to the eyelash and have these new curves be extra lashes. You don't have to do this, but I think it makes it look a lot better. So why not just add more lashes, keep them thin, and keep them relatively spaced from one another. Alright, let's now talk about the shader for the eyelash. Very easy, we'll just start with an RGB node and set it to black. And just like we did with the eyes and the body, just make an image texture and this is going to allow us to draw in with white. So we can just start adding like a bunch of white streaky looking lines onto our eyelash, which is going to give it that feel that we're going after. Alright, so now let's start laying out our hair strands. I just use a path curve and a bezier circle which I shape into an oval, and use that as the object for the path curve. Now all there is to do is position the hair however you want around the head, so I just started off making the hair here. Nothing crazy, just starting with the front. For the shader, we'll use a black color on an RGB node, and here, while I was making this, I did make a node setup that let me add a charcoal looking effect to the hair, but in the end, for this sketchy style, I really felt like it did more harm than good. So in the coming parts of the video, please just ignore that charcoal texture looking thing. 
Alright, so that aside, I'll keep on positioning the hair curves around the head, just getting the hairstyle made. I also recommend drawing in a darkness area for the scalp, which will make it a bit more realistic, especially around the areas where the hair ends and meets with the skin. And eventually I filled out the whole scalp with these hair curves, so now she actually has a full head of hair. And yeah, of course there's more of them I'm going to add as well, but this is the main part of the hairstyle down. Back to the face, I'll also draw in some darkness under the jaw. Cross-hatching this whole area manually would be a bit of a nightmare, so I'm just drawing in some darkness for it, and we'll go over it with those scratchy marks later. Like here, I'm just lightly marking those areas. Also gonna add some ambient occlusion under the ear just like this, because that's a common thing in this style. And I'm just going to then continue adding some black marks to kind of cross-hatch it. Okay, so I didn't get this on camera unfortunately, but I did end up severely darkening the under jaw area. This made it look a lot better than what it was before, so I just recommend you do it as well. You can also use cross-hatching to indicate a type of ambient occlusion, that the hair strands are casting some sort of shadow onto the face, like I'm drawing in here. So you can do this in certain parts of the head as well if you want. And onto the ear over here, I'll just draw in some darkness in the ear cavity, and make the Y shape in shadow as well as some darkness on the right part of the ear. And make sure I just kind of outline everything by drawing in black. Okay, now let's start adding some accessories. I wanted to add a bow tie, so I just added a plane and started modeling it into that type of shape. I'll subdivide and solidify it as well. That's one of my favorite combinations when modeling simple objects like this that need some thickness. And I'll reflect it over to the other side as well. To save time, I did use the stylized asset suite to easily add a crosshatch sketchy looking thing to this bow tie accessory. Make sure you have a lighting in your scene, otherwise you won't see anything. A specular reflection effect is also really useful here, so I added one and really brightened it up, which I think just looked really nice. Let's go back to our outline material now that we made at the very beginning, and it was black initially, but I'm just quickly going to make a node setup that allows us to easily make the outline very sketchy looking. Basically, we just have a crayon texture that tells the shader where the transparent areas are going to be. I talk more about it in my Making Pastel Portraits video. Alright, so let's do the hair now. Before we can do any texture painting or anything like that on them, we'll have to convert them to a mesh, because right now they're a curve. But even before that, it may be a good idea to reduce the resolution on the curves, because we don't need all that. Obviously, we could reduce this even more manually after we change it to a mesh, but for this tutorial, it's fine the way it is. So now, on pretty much every hair curve, we want to get rid of the mirror modifier, convert the hair curve to a mesh, and then once again, add the mirror modifier. So I'm just going to do that on every hair curve, just like this. Doing this, of course, allows us to change all the hair curves to a mesh, so we'll actually be able to texture paint on them and do all of that great stuff pretty soon. Okay, now we have to UV unwrap the hair curves. For the hair strands on this character, I just wanted to unwrap them in three different groups, meaning three different UV maps. Keep in mind, each one of these groups will have its own unique material. Unwrapping hair curves is very easy, you can just mark a seam on either side of each hair curve. And I forgot to turn off fill caps here on these hair strands, so unfortunately, they ended up having these weird like filled caps at the end, so just keep in mind um, you should get rid of those, because otherwise those caps will be in your unwrap as well. Once done, all you have to do is go into edit mode with all curves selected, and hit U unwrap to unwrap all of them together. Okay, now let's texture our hair by drawing in reflection. I'll start by doing our front hair strand, which will be a separate material called front hair. And super easy, we'll just use an image texture and mix node and set the color in B to be white, because we want to draw with white. Alright, so now I'm basically just going to draw in reflections in areas where the hair is bumping out a lot. So at the top of the hair strand, it's really bumping out, so I'll make it really white over there. On our other hair curves on top of the scalp, I'm going to do the same exact thing for its material. I'll add in that simple node setup we made with the image texture and mix node set to white color. So now we can easily draw in white on these curves. Do keep in mind you can hit Alt Q in texture paint mode to switch between different objects very easily. You might get some intersecting, so just adjust the geometry as needed. And now, generally in reflections for hair in this hairstyle, there will be reflections at its front, so that's why I'm drawing them here. Once you have these big white shapes and blocked in, you can go over them and make them smoother by adding thinner reflection strands. So I'll just continue blocking out my reflections here, and repeat that process of blocking them out at first, and then refining. It's a good idea to vary the length of these reflective streaks you draw, so that it doesn't look so plain and boring. You can also highlight around these big white shapes to give it the feeling that it's a bit smoother, and you can also continue the shape, but have it fade off and become way less bright. And doing this will make it look way more realistic and good, especially up close. 
I wanted to change the background as well, so I went to the World Shader tab and just used this simple node setup that allows me to easily tweak the background color without affecting the shading on my objects. Doing this was great because it allowed me to realize the face was a bit dark so I raised its value as well. Switching background oftentimes allows you to see your character with new eyes so you can detect any flaws a lot easier. Regarding these thinner strands I have going around the hair, you can use a node setup like this to easily tweak its transparency, which is what I did. It's something I found that just helps to make it look a little bit better. Anyways, after that, we just want to keep refining our reflections by continuing to draw in thinner strands at a lower strength. So yeah, it's quite a repetitive process of just doing this over and over again, but I'm leaving in this footage here so that you guys who are watching can see exactly what I was doing, what I was thinking, and how I approached drawing in these reflections. So yeah, enjoy. You can also draw random marks to indicate some loose hair strands falling around the back of her head. Okay, so now let's get to working on the lower body a bit more. The first thing I did was drew in a clavicle, just like this. I then just cross-hatched underneath it a bit because there's usually a slight bit of darkness in that area. Alright, so now I wanted to start adding some clothing and more accessories, so I just added a circle and modeled a pretty basic top for her. Nothing too crazy at all. I solidified it and subdivided it as well, and used Shade Auto Smooth to smooth it out. For the material for it, it's just a black base color staying with our black and white theme, and I played around with using a layer weight node to get a bright rim effect like I'm doing here, and you could also use a map range to further tweak it if you want. Anyways, I'll mute that for now, and the main thing we need is an image texture, so that we can draw in white on her clothing. Essentially, what you want to do is draw white in areas that kind of section off the different parts of her model. Around certain edges, it's important to do this too, and pretty much anywhere that there would be definition, you want to draw in white. These white scribbles I'm making are also really important as they further help to sell the manga feel. Just to make it more detailed, I also drew in a random pattern on her shirt to make it look a bit cooler. And to finish off, I'll kind of seam off the edges. If you still want to use that layer weight effect, you can also multiply it by a sketchy looking texture, which will distort it a bit and make it look more stylistic. But it's up to you whether or not you want to do that. And at this point, I just continued with the body, adding detail to whatever important parts there were that needed some extra shading. It's kind of just looking at parts of the body that are usually darker and trying to add a sketchy looking shadow in that area, with also occasional random cross hatches to make sure it keeps on feeling like it's in the style. So I'm just going all throughout the model, adding more details, and just making good progress. I also added a necklace, I just thought it looked really attractive on her, so that was my only real reason. And once again, keeping it in that black and white style here. To be honest, I could have made the pendant for it a lot more interesting, but I just left it as a circle here for now at this point. And using white, I kind of just drew in some random streaks of reflection along the chain for it. And I'm just going around the model and making whatever other changes we need to make because we're getting close to the end here. And a lot of it at this point is just adding more details to the hair reflections and rotating around the model to find flaws. Alright, lastly, let's go over making an eye globe so that when you want to move the eye, in the case you want to rig it, the shadows will be separate. Just duplicate your eye object and right click it so it sets back into place, and give this new sphere object a new material. We just want to use a mixed shader with a transparent BSDF and an RGB color, so we can draw in certain areas we want to be a dark color while the rest of the sphere remains transparent. If we add an image texture, we can just plug it into the fact so that basically where we draw, it'll be that black RGB color whereas everywhere else is just going to be transparent. Really quickly, I'll go back to our regular eye object and remove all of the shadows that I drew, and we're going to just redo it but on our eye globe object this time. So once done, go back to your eye globe object and just draw in exactly as we did before using that cross hatching type of style. Doing this will allow us to move the eye object while the eye shadow object remains in place. And so now the shadows look real. Lastly, I realized I could improve the lashes a bit, so I messed around with the curves a bit, making some of them thinner and more refined, and adjusting their location a bit. You really want to vary the shape and size of these thin eyelashes. You'll notice here, some of them are together, some of them are apart, so yeah. 
Okay guys, so we're done at this point. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn to make high quality stylized 3D models and animations like this, check out my masterclass and community over on ukyogirls.io. Have a great day.